Hello viewers and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. That is a 1999 Chevrolet 2500 Suburban. It's got the big 5.7 350 small block America in it and it doesn't run. Now this thing got towed in uh, because it quit on the guy going down the road. Prior to that he was having some problems with a misfire at idle. Uh, he says, you know, he let it idle, boom, 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 boom. You'd hear, you know, misfiring out tailpipe, engine lights on, stuff like that. He did the old plugs in a prayer, didn't help. Did a distributor cap, didn't help. I see a lot of shiny stuff under the hood. Idle air control valve, throttle position sensor, map sensor, mass airflow, all this, all these parts, uh, you know, were put on there through triagnostics. Nothing worked. He kept driving it. And then it just quit on him. Kept lost power going down the road, quit. Left him huffing it. So then what he did is he cranked it until the starter burned out of it and then, you know, dragged it here. So long story short, I didn't know that until after I put the starter in out in the parking lot. So right now the starter is in it. It cranks over. To me, it sounds like the timing is off. It cranks and then it binds up on the starter and, you know, you hear it kind of fire at the wrong time and the engine kind of comes to a halt. We'll crank it over. I'll show you. But that's where I'm at. I haven't really done anything else uh, at this point. So I thought I'd grab the camera. Bring you guys along. We'll try to discover along the way why this truck doesn't run anymore. Take it from there. Even though in my opinion, however you take that, I think it sounds like the timing is off because of the way it cranks. We're still going to do some very simple and quick tests before we start rabbit trailing down a hole we don't want to be in. Easy enough to check fuel pressure on these. You know, we have to have fuel, uh, you know, intake, compression, exhaust, suck, squeeze, bang, blow is the method I've used. Uh, and it's all got to happen at the right time, so easy enough, we'll you know, make sure we have fuel pressure. I grabbed a spark tester somewhere here in my pocket. We're going to make sure we have spark. If we have that, then we're going to make sure we have all that at the right time, you know, along with compression. Um, I think what we're going to find is, once we get this thing running, is we're probably going to have his original complaint of the uh, idle misfire, or, you know, the fish bite there in an idle or whatever his original problem was. And I don't know if this problem was implanted or not. I don't know what we're going to find, but that's, uh, that's what we're doing. So I have a uh, tendency to kind of stick to a, a routine when, you know, diagnosing a no-start usually gets us going pretty quick. Let's see. We got a Schrader valve here somewhere. Right, yeah. So we'll take our Schrader valve off. We'll set that where we're going to lose it. We'll get this little guy back here. Yeah, you must have been cranking it for a while. The starter was completely dead, completely open circuited. I hear the pump run. It smells like gasoline. So that's, that's the other thing you do when you're doing uh, fuel pressure is fuel sample. Make sure it's like ain't full of diesel fuel or something like that. No, it sounds ridiculous, but it happens. So there's that. Uh, Make sure it's snug before we do the old spark test. <laughs> That'll be my kind of fire here. So we'll grab the number one. Our side front. Looks like he's got a brand new set of auto lights in here. So we'll bring this little guy up here. Get the old spark tester out of the pocket. Stick that on there. You can see compressor will be a good ground. Should be able to jump that gap. Let's see what we have. Let me go crank this little guy. Like I say, it's not gonna sound too good, just FYI. We got that fuel pressure. Yeah, it's about 58 pounds, somewhere right in there. Oh, yeehaw, look at that. We got no sparky. We got no sparky sparky, but we got fuel pressure. There's that <laughs> compressor, I swear, every freaking time. Honest folks, I'm not doing that intentionally. It just works out really fantastic. All right, so we have no spark coming out of the cab, at least on that cylinder. Now, this has distributor addition, so we're gonna go right to the coil, see if we have any spark coming out of the coil. Sounds like we have spark the way it binds up on us. I like that uh, training dipstick. Kind of missing something there. Let's see. see if we can just do it like this. Hopefully this works. 
want somebody getting zapped. Why is that thing closed? Well, that's filling. We're going to clip this on the end of the plug wire and stick this in the coil. I've got no way to crank the stick. Here, let me put a remote starter on this thing so I can crank it and watch it at the same time. So I got a remote start button. Can't show you. There's our spark tester right back there. Key is on. It's in park. Oh, we got a spark there. See that? You guys see that? Wow, fancy. So what's that mean? We got spark into the coil. We got no spark coming out of it. We got bad rotor. Rotor button burnt through. Supposedly that's all been replaced. Bad distributor cap. I'm gonna check one more plug wire here just to make sure it does happen to be the one we were on it was no good. So we'll go for the number two cylinder. And just ground it to the valve cover here. Nice. Whoop. You guys probably won't be able to see this, but I just want to crank it real quick here just to see. Oh, don't hit me, don't burn. No, nope. got no spark here at number two. Gotta have spark going somewhere, though, from the sounds of it. But if we got no spark at one, we got no spark at two, we're gonna go back to the distributor cap and see what is happening under there, because our spark has to be going somewhere, it's okay. Um, you'll see on these Chevys or any distributor engine it can actually burn a hole straight through the rotor button and just be you know shooting to the distributor shaft or the screws could fall out of the rotor or you name it. A lot of this stuff under here is kind of jerry rigged together. So let me get back to the cap. We'll see what we have. So we made it to the distributor cap. I think what we will do, we only have to pull one side of the wires off. The distributor is loose back here, FYI. I noticed that. Now I have already looked for I got too far to make sure the firing order is right in coordinates with the cap, and I also looked it up on Mitchell just to be sure. And the firing order is right. Pull the cap off here. These take a T20 Torx bit. Now these distributors are plastic. Nine out of ten times you bring them in, the ears are broke off them. Because somebody puts a new cap on it and the new screws come with like red Loctite gobbled all over them. And when you try to run them down through, if you don't take and wire wheel that Loctite off, it just breaks the ear off the distributor almost every time. So these ones have blue Loctite on them. Let's set this over here, we'll never find it again. Put this up here. There's our cap. It does look pretty good. Let's set this to the side. Uh-oh. Did you see that? I just moved that. <laughs> Uh, you, hey, your problem lady right there. <laughs> your, your distributor's bad. Uh, you guys probably can't see it because it's stinking AC hose. Can you see me now? So there's our rotor button. You should not be able to move your uh, rotor. Just a little FYI. Now I say the distributor is loose, but it's not like, you know, it's not obviously popping up and out, but that lady is your problem. Definitely. All right, so what is it? Uh, let me get a little, little wrench. Looks like there's a mountain of dirt back here, too. We're going to have to uh, have to pull the distributor out because the gear is probably stripped or keyways broke or pin or something. Something bad has happened down yonder. Let me get a little wrench. What we could do is we could just uh, you know move plug wires around until we find the right order. <laughs> I don't know what size, a half inch or 13, I don't know. Oh, she's snug. Half inch is the answer. All right, I don't know if you gotta take these out all the way. No, you don't. Look at that. You just make her loosey goosey. 
Alright. Moment of truth. Oh boy. Looks like we got ourselves a stripper. Look at that distributor gear. She's done gone and got chowdered up. Gear, gear, gear. No gear. Why? What happened? That's the, the grand question. Is the, is the shaft bent? I don't know. Did the oil pump seize up and it just chowdered them gears off? What in the thunder does the cam look like? That's what we need to know. Can we see it? Can you see it, little guy? <laughs> nope, I can't. Let's see what we got here. I did find both of them back here, though. Both of what? Both of these nuts. <laughs> well, so check my man back here. Oh, what else do we got? Wow. Well, let me get a mirror. I could probably get a bore scope. We could look, but let me just get a mirror and have a little gander down the hole. Let's see what she looks like. Why did that strip out? That should fill the comment box. I'm gonna need a flashlight. I can't see crap. See, said the blind man. I see the oil pump. I'm seeing the side of the gear. I'm just telling you guys what I'm seeing. It's kind of a dirt, dirty hole. I don't know if a bore scope will be much help to us. We could get it and try. The one I have doesn't have a very good light on it. But we can give her a little look-see down in there, see what things look like. Because it concerns me as to why it, you know, just destroyed that distributor gear, you know, randomly in one spot. Because it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like the rest of the gear is too, uh, well, yeah, I guess it is. I was going to say, I didn't think it was too knife edged, but it definitely is. Yeah, those gears are actually worn. Let her focus here. Let's see if it'll focus. Focus. They're worn right to a knife edge. So she's been wearing on it, and she finally... Give up the ghost. Oh, maybe the distributor was just getting hard to turn. She's got a bunch of miles on her, but there's that. I'd like to have a look at that cam gear just to be sure. I hate to go stuff a distributor in it to find out the you know cam gear looks just like this, where it's you know worn right to a knife edge. Typically, the distributor gear will take you know the brunt of it. And the worst part is, you know, we could do this, and this guy could still have his at idle misfire. That's the crappy part. Um, you know, this is just what left them walking. So when you're explaining to your customer, you know, first it needs a starter because it doesn't crank. Second, it needs a distributor because it doesn't start. And then third, who knows, this motor could be junk. Uh, we have no idea until we get it running. That's the beauty of it. I got these nuts. So I've got my little webcam here. I don't know, webcam bore scope. This is just a really cheapy from the, uh, from the internet, from the Amazon. I think these things are like 15 bucks. Got about five feet of cord on it. I've got my little laptop over here. And it's not a big display, but the automotive specific ones of these little guys are like 400 bucks. So I'm just gonna take this. We're gonna tape it to a pick so we can stick it down in the hole. See if we can have a look what's down in there. Like I say, the only sucky part about these is the light on them is not that bright. Therefore, it doesn't work that well. So you gotta have a secondary light. Let me just see here. So we'll stick this light down in the hole. Let me just see if I can see anything before we get too excited here. Oh, dang it all the heck. It's come unplugged. The plugs are kind of cheap on them. They're all around kind of cheap, but they, they work when they want it to. Let's see, she's gonna work now. Okay, now she's back to working again. 
Hey, sick guy. Let me get stuff where I can see what the thunder I'm doing. Get a light in the hole. And here we go. Let me see. top of the oil pump. Let me see if I can get my uh, light down in here a little bit better for us. And there, fellas, is the edge of our cam gear. Now, it looks pretty nice from what we can see. Let me try to hold this all with one hand. Okay, let me reach over here to our starter button. Let me get this where we decent what would you say pull out there we go out she comes so it looks decent you know it doesn't look all chowdered up like our distributor gear so that's good turn that little guy off uh, what I'll do next is I'll reach down in there with a screwdriver to turn the oil pump see how that feels um, if that feels okay now of course I can only turn it you know so fast uh, let me go get a screwdriver. I should be able to reach it with this little fella. I think I totally missed. Come on, talk to me. I know you're somewhere down here. Kind of got to do the old poke and hope here. There we go. Now we're in the groove. You can always tell when you're in the groove. So the oil pump turns. Let me get back in there. Oops, missed. No, I don't have an oil pump drive for a 350 Chevy. I haven't seen one of these things in about probably three or four years anyways. I think the last one I'd seen I did a video on. These are not very popular in our area because they quit using them around this year. 99, 2000, somewhere in there. I think they had them in the 2500s for a while, for up to 2000-ish. Yeah, there we go. We're back in. Turn, turn. Turn it the other way. So oil pump spins nice and free. Well, I mean, I can feel the, feel the gears in it. It doesn't feel like it's seized up, of course. You know, I'm only spinning it at a fraction of the rate which it spins when it's running under full beans. So I guess at this point, I'm not a Chevy guy, so I can't tell you if this is super duper common. I've heard of it. Now we've seen it. I do hear some squeaking in this distributor. I'm probably gonna opt for a new distributor. This ear, one of these ears was cracked. I did notice it when it had the screw on it. Yeah, this one here has a crack running straight across it. At this point, I'm going to opt for a new distributor. Um, you know, in case this is the culprit and it's seizing up, or you know, maybe it's just crappy maintenance. But that's it. We did the diagnosis. I did what we needed to do. All right, folks, that's it. Came to a quick conclusion on this one. What's going on? Uh, to the best of my ability, I think we've ruled out what we can. Cam gear looks good. Distributor gear is obviously wonky. Oil pump turns. You know, who knows what causes this. Uh, we can, you know, always venture a bunch of guesses. I'm going to get a new distributor. They've got one in stock at the parts store. I'll stop and grab that on my way home. Uh, it's past 5 o'clock, so I'm going to leave. We'll come in. We'll pop that thing in in the morning. Now, to do that, we're going to have to, you know, run number one at top dead center of compression. So I'm going to leave my little starter button in there. We'll yank that plug out, get it set up, get this distributor drop back in. Uh, the vehicle will run at that point, or at least it should, as long as there's nothing else goofy on it. And then hopefully, well, maybe it takes care of his, you know, low idle misfire. If not, then we'll make another video tracking that down. We'll get back to the original problem and see if we can do that. 
you want to make sure you see that video, go down there, click subscribe, ring that bell. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.